Hello, everyone. My name is Shinji Nakasuka. In this lecture, I'd like to talk to you about the systems engineering for micro nano pico satellite. Let me introduce myself first. I'm now the professor of the Department of Aeronautics and Astronautics, University of Tokyo, and have been working for the University of Tokyo since 1990. I'm also the member of Space Policy Committee of the Japanese government and the chairperson of UNICEF Global. My research topics include micro nano pico satellites, novel space systems, guidance, navigation and control, autonomy and the intelligence for space systems. These are the pictures of the first uh, CubeSat CIFO left, which was launched in 2003 as a world first CubeSat, and the light, the second CubeSat Sci-5. Sci-4 has been surviving space for more than 18 years, and the Sci-5, which was launched in 2005, has also been working still now over 16 years. This show the pictures captured by Sci-4 year by year. As we wanted to make a very simple satellite, Sci-4 did not have an active attitude control system to direct its camera to the Earth. Therefore, we took such a strategy that Sci-4 captured as many pictures as possible. And such pictures that seem to have us images were kept in the memory and downlinked to the ground. Other pictures were discarded. While downlinking, thumbnail type very low resolution images were downlinked first. And if we decided that the image being downlinked is not good, we quitted downlink and discarded the images. In this way, we made the best of the low speed communication channel to downlink as many photos as possible. Finally, we could downlink more than 500 photos over 18 years. You can see that the color of the Earth has been changed. When we saw these color changes, we first were very afraid that the color of the Earth has been changed to yellow. Of course, but the truth is not like that. The truth is this change came from the degradation of camera lens by ultraviolet ray or radiation in space, as the lens were a plastic lens. We could obtain such important information as to the space environment effects as our satellite could survive in space for a very long time. This shows a history of battery voltage over 18 years. The lower side, lower voltage, show the voltage when large current is being extracted from the battery and upper side show the voltage when such large current is not extracted from battery. The difference indicates the internal impedance of the battery, which became larger in time. This is one symptom of battery degradation over time, which is coming from large number of charge and discharge cycle in orbit and we could obtain such very important data on battery performance degradation over long years, which can be used for writing scientific papers or for the following missions. In this way, if your satellite can survive in space for a long time, you can get various information, such as how the space environment exert effect on the performance of components or parts, and you can obtain experiences on how to continue the satellite operations using your degraded components or part. These information and experiences would be very valuable for your next satellite project. So very important thing for you to do is to design a satellite which can live long in space. That is very, very important. Today's lecture will focus on that with the following contents. Subsystems and their relationship, possible causes of uh, CubeSat failures. Why are space systems difficult? Make your satellite die hard. Start with a very simple satellite. 
study and the training before building a CubeSat. Define the target outcomes of the project. And finally, conclusions. Section one, subsystems and their relationships. As you know, the satellite or even the CubeSat have many subsystems inside of the satellite. Let me first summarize such subsystems and their interfaces. C and DH stands for Command and Data Handling System, which have the onboard computer, memory, and so on. And the sensors will be a voltage sensor or temperature change sensor, which are called the internal sensors, and the attitude related sensor like a magnetic sensor, sun star sensor, gyro, and the GPS is related to its position sensor. And the actuators will include the thrusters, magnetic torquer, reaction wheel, and so on. Sometimes we will constitute the AOCS, attitude and orbit control system, which manages G's attitude sensor and actuator to control its attitude or orbit. The communication system will have the computer and the transmitter to send the data to the ground called the downlink or receiver, which receives a command from the ground, which is called uplink. And the power system will provide power to these subsystems, which has the solar cells battery and the battery charging and the discharging system. As to the infrastructure, I, I have the, uh, we have the thermal control system to keep the temperature of each part of the satellite and the structure and the mechanism system. Mechanism system uh, means something which are moving in the satellite like antenna or paddle motor. And the, don't forget ground station. As there are many subsystems, you should design the interface between these subsystems properly. That design has a large effect to the reliability of the satellite. Let me pick up some of very important interfaces. First, you should decide how many CPU are to be used. One OBC or two or more OBCs. And each OBC should be assigned main function, attitude control, or a different kind of the function. The interfaces between C and the DH and other subsystems. For example, what kind of the information line should be used from RS232C, two, two RS422, 1553B, space wire, canvas. There are many, many uh, choices. And the interval of data exchange, for example, 10 millisecond or one second and so on. And what kind of the data to be transferred between subsystems? That is another very important uh, data, uh, important co consideration. And the interfaces between C and the DH and the communication subsystem. The most important factor to be considered is how will large volumes of data for downlink be stored? Large volume of data will be generated in the satellite from your scientific experiment or the Earth observation. So, for example, the C and the DH have a large memory to store such kind of the data or communication subsystem will have such kind of the large uh, data bank. Interfaces between C and the DH and the mission subsystem. For example, how will mission component be controlled? And how are those data obtained from mission component received by the C and the DH? That interface is very important. And finally, uh, between power subsystem and other subsystems. As I will describe you later, reset or power off on function is very important to recover your satellite from malfunctions. And so what kind of the reset function is to be implemented? That is a very, very important factor. Section two, possible causes of CubeSat failures. Past failures. This slide shows the result of the survey of past failures of CubeSat 
And this research is done by St. Louis University of the United States of America. And this statistics only includes such CubeSats developed by universities, emerging countries, and communities, and do not include CubeSat used for business. DOI here, uh, die on arrival, means a satellite did not function after release from rocket. And the early loss means a satellite died soon after the um, orbit operation started. If we include the launch failure, the failure rate of CubeSat is about 50%. This percentage is very high, not good, and we should consider some ways to avoid such failures. Let me show some frequent causes of failure of the CubeSat or other micro nano pico satellite. First, radiation causes electronics failures. So maybe as you know, the radiation is a very bad thing for the electronics. And in order to solve this problem, you should use space proven parts or conduct radiation tests during early development phase. The secondary, electric, part of electric power subsystem fails to provide power or battery voltage gets very low and cannot be recovered. This is very frequently uh, occurring failure of the satellite. And in order to solve this problem, you should design satellite behaviors under low battery voltage, like a safe mode and so on. And you should make the solar power generation possible in any situation, even under the very, very low battery voltage. And communication subsystem fails to communicate with the ground station because of component failures, insufficient RF power, or EMI, standing for electromagnetic interference. And in order to deal with these problems, you should implement backup systems. For example, receiver of the communication system is very important, so you should put redundant receivers. That is one option. And you should calculate the link equation correctly and add enough link margin. And you should conduct ground tests using engineering model or flight model in a very realistic situation. This realistic situation is very important. And you should find and consult with communication technology experts. Maybe you can find some uh, around your uh, university or institute. Number three, why space systems are difficult? Maybe as you uh, easily recognize, space is a very harsh environment. For example, vacuum environment will give uh, vaporization of, uh, for example, the glue or paint on your satellite. And the cold welding give the, something like a sticking uh, between the metal of the same material in space because there is no air uh, between these two components. And the friction, electric discharge, and the charge, uh, change of the material heat spot may occur in the vacuum environment. Second, radiation. Radiation gives damage to electric parts and it will give uh, it will result in the malfunction and breakdown sometimes, or even the weak radiation will give the electric parts uh, upset, like uh, changing the data from zero to one or one to zero. And also, radiation gives in a long time degradation of solar cells and the materials in space. Samo is also the very harsh environment. For example, if you put the aluminum plate in perpendicular direction with the uh, sunlight, then the temperature will go as high as 400 degrees Celsius. And if it uh, goes uh, behind the earth, that is eclipse period, its temperature goes down as low as minus 50 or 60 degrees Celsius. So such kind of the large temperature difference or cycles will occur and heat shock or heat spot will also occur, occurring uh, in space. 
and the launch environment will give the satellite a very large vibration, shock acceleration, sound vibration environment. And the satellite should endure uh, against G's launch environment, uh, for example, 15 to 20 minutes. And the distance is another very harsh environment because you should secure very long range communication over 500 kilometer or sometimes more than 2000 kilometer. Another factors include atomic oxygen, plasma, debris meteoroid or ultraviolet rays. So another very difficult environment in space is like this. A satellite cannot be touched until the end of its lifetime once it is launched into the space. So this uh, system is called the non-maintainable system. So this is very, very different from a ground system like cars or plants or even atomic reactors, which can be maintained uh, with, with a certain interval. So the space is very, very different from such a situation. And sometimes the satellite has to survive in space for more than 10 years without any human interactions. So this is called a non-maintainable system. Therefore, what do you should do? Yes, so you should imagine all the possible events and anomalies which may happen to your satellite and prepare countermeasures for them. In order to do this, Imagination is very, very important. And also you should conduct ground tests in various settings to ensure proper functionality of your satellite in the space environment in various operation modes. So you should be careful that the space system is non-maintainable system. Section four, make your satellite die hard. From now on, I'd like to talk to you on more general framework or technological issues to prevent failures of your CubeSat. Water flow type project management. The water flow type project managing, ma management is one key strategy to avoid design mistakes. At each phase, we should check that the design is valid and there is no mistake in interface design between subsystems. And only if we can be confident, then we will proceed to the next phase. That means we never go back to the previous phase. In order to assure satellites proper functions in space, you should conduct various ground tests. The test will include radiation test, vibration tests, shock test, thermal test, thermal vacuum test, and so on. And these tests should be done at each phase and the result have to be reflected to redesign with your satellite if required. At each review meetings, such as PDL, CDL, you can check the design by yourself again and also get the comments and the suggestions from outside experts. These meetings also provide good occasions to share the design among all the development members. Usually each team is focusing on each subsystem design. So such a problem, which may come from interfaces between different subsystems are usually hard to find. Review meetings are very good opportunity for the members to know the other subsystem design and to check validity of the interfaces. TableSat. TableSat will provide you with a good opportunity to check the functionalities of components and interfaces between different components. For example, you can check whether each component can be turned on or off by the onboard computer or by the ground commands properly. Or you can check whether they, have, uh, they behave as expected by exchanging data with other components correctly. You can also check the cable design between components as well. This test should be done in BBM, EM, and FM phases. And in FM phase, you should do this 
before implementing components and the harness into the satellite structure. One important consideration is that you should set up various contexts for the test. Context. A context means a certain satellite status depending on which component is on or off, solar power generation is being done or not, and what kind of software is running in the onboard computer. A mal malfunction of component or interface may occur only in a certain context, which you should also find out. Such kind of the very layer failure is very hard to find. Therefore, you have to set up all the possible context for this table sat test and verify that the system works properly in any context. So uh, let me show you one example of the satellite system design, which have been done in our Sci4 system. The key question is that how to realize a certain level of reliability with limited resources. So as I said, the one CubeSat has a very severe limitation of size, weight, and power. And within that limitation, how we can realize a certain level of reliability. Let me show that. We have a three subsystem on board a computer and the TX transmitter system and the CW beacon and the receiver system here. We selected as OBC the PIC processor. It, that is a very small 8-bit processor. And the, these uh, PIC processor, this PIC processor is distributed in OBC system, TX system, and the CWRX system, one in each subsystem. And the PIC processor only has a very limited uh, computational power. So it cannot do all the tasks within the satellite. For example, a PIC processor within the OBC subsystem is doing its job as to the OBC management. But in addition to that, it watches the behavior of other subsystems, uh, TX and the CWRX subsystems. And if it detects some anomalous behavior of these subsystems, it turned off the power line to uh, these subsystems like this. And the, on the other hand, OBC system's behavior is you know, monitored or watched by the CWRX system. And the CWRX system detects some anomaly in the OBC system, it turn off this power line. And also this system has a function to monitor and detect uh, excess current generated by a radiation effect. For example, uh, this OBC is watching the power line to TX here. And if it detect excess current within this power line, then it suddenly turn off uh, this power line. So that is very, very important to keep the satellite status against radiation effect. And also the OBC's power line is watched by this CWRX system. And if it detect the SCE effect, then it turned off this line. In this way, you should consider how to realize die hard system that is very, very essential by utilizing, for example, mutual monitoring or hierarchical monitoring or reset power off on operation. And also, you should have some mechanism to monitor excess current against radiation effects. Let me show another example of our satellite. That is a prism, our third satellite. In our first two CubeSats, Psi-4 and Psi-5 described before, we could find out that the 8-bit peak processor is very tolerant against radiation in space and can survive in space. So we put the two of them as a controller of these two RF. Okay, these two RF subsystems. RF receiver, that is RX, is very, very important. And if it fails, we cannot send any command to the satellite. 
So we implemented redundant receivers here. The PIC processors within these subsystem cannot do heavy computation. So it cannot do all the tasks in the satellite. So we put the two additional high performance processor H8 here in the TX system and the power system. And also the main computer, which has a large cap uh, capability of the computation called SH2 here, because we need to do active attitude control function. The technological issue is that these new CPUs like H8 or SH2 are not space proven. So we cannot rely on these CPU for the satellite survivability. What we should do? Yes, therefore we took such a strategy that 8-bit eight, eight peak processors, which are implemented here, watch the other three CPU. And if some anomalies occurs in these new CPU, pick, turn off and on such processors. But these new CPUs never reset the peak processor. That means hierarchical monitoring is employed. In this way, we designed the robust C and DH as a combination of high performance, but not space proven processors and low performance, but space proven processors. This architecture worked very well in space and the PRISM, which was launched in 2009, has been surviving in space until now for more than 12 years. Maybe as you recognize, this power off on, sometimes called the reset or power cycle, is a very effective way to recover electronic system to normal state. For example, when you use a laptop or a PC on the ground, if PC gets hung up, the most usual way to recover is recover is to turn off the PC and turn on again. That is called the reset. The same action is also effective in space. If the anomaly is not a fatal damage to the parts or components, most of the electronic parts can be recovered by this reset operation. How can you do this reset operation? There may be several ways. And so please consider or invent by yourself. In this slide, let me show one example of effective ways of reset on a very important pairs of component that is a receiver, RX, and the OBC on board the computer. We implement a counter circuit here. This circuit is not made out of high performance CPU, which may be very weak in space, but by hardware logic, which is very strong against radiation or other effects. If you already have very reliable CPU, just like the 8-bit processor, peak processors in our CubeSat, then it is also good to use such CPUs here, even if its performance is not so high as a task does not require much computational load. We can assume that this counter circuit always works correctly. This circuit counts up from zero, and when the counter number reaches a certain threshold, it will reset RX and OBC. So the RX and OBC will be reset at a certain fixed interval like uh, for example one day or one week and so on and which will recover the satellite function even if some anomaly happens in rx and obc but maybe as you can easily imagine this reset of rx obc is not favorable because it will stop the normal operation of a satellite for a certain period of time so it is preferable to have a method to reset the count up of this counter circuit. In this system, this counter reset can only be done by the command from the ground through RX and OBC, which reset this counter circuit. That means this counter reset only occurs when the RX and OBC 
and these lines between these subsystems are operating normally. If anomaly occurs in Rx, OBC, or this line, then this counter reset never happens. And Rx and OBC will be reset after one day or one week. In this way, we can effectively reset failed component while keeping continuity of operations as much as possible. The safe mode. In many satellites, safe mode has been used to enhance their survivability. So let me show that. Sometimes anomalous situation affects satellite, such that, for example, the battery voltage drops to very, very low value, and the rounding to telemetry include such data that cannot be explained. That means some anomaly happened around the uh, uh, TX system. And the satellite attitude motion is strange. So such kind of anomalous situation may be detected by the ground station. And in that case, the maximum survivability can be obtained by making your satellite transfer to safe mode. And this safe mode definition is very important. The safe mode should assure minimum power consumption of components. Power generation is larger than the power consumption and the sufficient data for analysis of the cause of anomaly is downlinked. So while we are making the satellite to transfer this safe mode, we can check and we can discuss on the ground what happened in the satellite. And the safe mode should be designed such that it can be entered even when the ground station cannot communicate with your satellite because these anomaly may happen at any time. So in that sense, safe mode is a survival mode and you should properly de define the safe mode and also properly define or uh, implement the mechanism to, uh, for the satellite to go into the safe mode. As to the communication system, communication system is very important and many satellite fails because of the communication system's failure. Let me show very important tactics in the communication system design. Center line is very important. So we call the line from ground station, receiver, OBC at center line. Please assure proper functionality of this line. And you should use a reliable CPU inside the communication receiver because if it fails, so you cannot send any command to the satellite. And it is recommended that the command from the ground can reset the component without using the OBC because OBC may fail or the line between the communication system to the OBC may fail. Even in that case, you can send a command and reset the total satellite. So that means a certain function should be implemented in the RX system. You should design an effective antenna. In the CubeSat case, antenna should be stowed during launch and take a proper shape after deployment. Sometimes this deployment process uh, may fail and the antenna will not be in a very proper uh, configuration. Even if any component fails, some information should be downlink to the ground. For example, if the, you have a servo uh, transmitter system like a CW beacon and the, some packet, then even if the packet line fails, CW beacon can be used as a backup for telemetry downlink. So you can get some information of the satellite status through CW beacon. So you should implement such a mechanism. And the functional redundancy is very important because the CubeSat is very small. For example, if you use S-band for housekeeping and X-band for mission data, and in case of S-band failure, X-band can also be used for downlink of housekeeping telemetry and vice versa. So this kind of the 
redundancy is called functional redundancy, which is different from a very simple uh, redundancy. Finally, I'd like to say about solar power generation. So there are several ways to implement solar cells on your satellite. There are two types of solar cell configuration, solar paddle type and body mount type. If you use a solar paddle type, you can expect the large power generation. But this kind of the large power generation is only possible when the satellite attitude is well controlled so that the sunlight is coming to the solar cell surface. So that means this configuration is high risk, high return type strategy. On the other hand, on the body mount type, so the surface area is very much limited. That means the cell area is also very much limited. So it can only provide it a limited power. But the power generation would be possible in any attitude. So it is kind of the low risk, low return type strategy. So let me consider which type would be good for the one CubeSat. So for the one CubeSat, body mounted cells would be very much suggested because you maybe you don't control your satellite attitude properly. So I'd like to recommend this kind of the body cell type, which we employed in our first CubeSat. Section five, start with a very simple satellite. Even if this is your first, this is your first satellite project, maybe you want to have a very attractive, interesting, and as a result, very high level mission on your satellite because developing a satellite is very rare opportunity for you. But considering the fact that CubeSat, especially one CubeSat is very small and has very little resource of size, weight and power. And if this is your first satellite project, then I would recommend that you should start with very simple and not so difficult mission. And during your satellite development, after you have a confidence that your satellite works properly in space and still you have additional time and budget, you can add some more missions, just like our camera mission in our first CubeSat. In our CubeSat, we focused on the uh, survivability of the satellite in space and we almost have all the effort, uh, uh, focus all the effort to that aspect. And in addition to that, after we get a confidence, uh, we start the development of the camera mission. So in this way, step upping from a very simple mission to the difficult mission would be very important. Let me show several tactics. As I said, in your first project, start with a very simple and easy to realize type of mission. And when you still have additional time and budget and try to then try to consider additional missions. That means you start from KISS. KISS means keep it stupidly simple. It is a keyword. And if this is your first mission, then functioning CubeSat in space in itself is an important mission. We have been pursuing survivability as much as possible in our satellite Sci-4, and as a result, we can obtain 18 years, very long lifetime of the CubeSat. So survivability is very important. And find out and pursue what you can do with your limited resources, not aiming at too high a level and try to find external supporters. That is very, very important. Let me show uh, the experiences in our first CubeSat case. When we started the CubeSat development around 2000, we had almost nothing, including technologies, ground testing facility, and the knowledge about how to apply for frequency permissions. At that time, we searched for external supporters and showed 
our enthusiasm that we will develop a satellite by ourselves. Then they supported us a lot in many aspects. And through this process, maybe you can get a technological consultation, testing facility, or sometimes a donation would also be possible. And the promotion of the activities to the general public is very important. Section six, study and the training before building a CubeSat. Satellite can be developed and operated by integrating various fields of technologies and skills, including systems engineering and project management. Therefore, I would suggest that you should first learn at least the required technological fields before starting satellite development. These are some of such important academic fields and technologies which you should learn beforehand. Basic knowledge of mathematics, physics, rigid body dynamics, electronics, RF frequency, and so on. Printed circuit board PCP designed to realize certain functions should be trained uh, before the satellite development. As to the space uh, technological field, orbital mechanics, attitude dynamics and the control of the satellite and the thermal structure dynamics for space systems. And the practical training using real project how to better done before the satellite development. So for this objective, I would like to suggest the CANSAT uh, training beforehand. CANSAT is a juice can size, very small satellite model. And you can implement satellite functions, including bus and mission functions into this small size. CANSAT is dropped from a certain height and during its descent, you can do various experiments, just like operating a satellite. CANSAT has various features similar to real satellite, and you can learn project management or teamwork, system level design, including weight, power, budgeting, how to make a die-hard system, and the ground test and operations from the ground. CANSAT is usually very cheap, and it does not require so long a time for the development, maybe less than six months or so. So I think the CANSAT is a very good starting point for your development of your satellite. Many Japanese universities have been using these CANSAT as training tools of satellite development since 1999. Initially, this type 350 milliliter juice can sized CANSAT were used. Or sometimes a little larger size CANSAT like this have been developed. In our annual experiment organized in Nevada, United States, which is called ALICE, the CANSAT are packed in this cylinder, which will be launched by amateur rocket to four kilometer altitude. Then the CANSAT are released from rocket and during the descent, taking usually about 15 to 20 minutes, students can conduct various experiments, such as measuring temperature and air pressure at a different height, taking pictures from the sky, GPS experiment, formation flying, autonomous navigation and control, and so on. There are several ways to lift your CANSAT to a certain height. In a CANSAT experiment annually held in the United States, a rocket lifts our CANSAT up to four kilometer height. This experiment is called ALICE, which we have been conducted annually since 1999 to now. We ask the amateur rocket group of the United States to launch our CANSAT. Another way is to use a helium balloon or recently drone or UAVs are, all used, are also used or dropping it from a high building would also be possible. 
if you use balloon UAV drone, then the achievable height would be about just 50 meters to 100 meters, not so high. Even in that case, the, in that case, the experimental time for CANSAT would be something like a 10 to 20 seconds. That is not so large time. But even within such short time, you can conduct interesting experiments. So please consider by yourself, what you can do using this CANSAT tool. Since 2001, we have been organizing a very interesting competition called the Comeback Competition in Alice, the experiment in the United States. The CANSAT, after release from rocket at four kilometer altitude, should autonomously come back to a certain designated point on the, on the field, which is indicated in the form of longitude and latitude. And the method to go back to a certain point is by flying back or running back types. Left pictures show the participating cancer in 2018. You can see various types of cancer, including fixed wing, parafoil, drone, rover, and so on. And the right picture shows that one rover developed by the student of the University of Tokyo could reach the target point and won the competition in 2017. University Space Engineering Consortium in Japan, UNICEF, has been supporting Japanese university students' satellite development activities since 2002. The artists in USA or competitions in Japan are also managed by this consortium. This UNICEF has been inviting teacher-level persons from foreign countries to whom UNICEF members teach how to teach cancer with actual hands-on training. They returned to their home countries and started cancer teaching. This training is called CLTP, standing for Cancer to Leader Training Program, and the GID shows its history and the participants. Recently, Heptasat, a small cubic-shaped satellite model, is used for training. We already accepted 96 participants from 46 countries, and therefore the Cancer-based hands-on training already started in many countries. Section seven, define the target outcome of the project. Maybe one of the important objective of develop, developing your CubeSat is education. You should learn many things from the CubeSat project. What you can learn from the project depends on the way how you develop your CubeSat. Now you can buy CubeSat component easily from the website, but you still can develop your own component. How to mix purchased component and ones of your own design would be a very important consideration. So let me show several options. Option one is to assemble purchased component with a fixed mission. That means you develop the kit do ground test and launch and operation. A small difference we have, option one one, is to add one original mission with your own designed component. So in this case, in addition to the missions which are already implemented in a kit, you create your own mission and design and fabricate the component which realize your mission. Option two is to create your own mission, buy components to realize it, do ground test and launch an operation. So this is different from option one because you create your own missions, but you buy all the components in this case. In addition to the option two, we have option two one. In this case, you design and fabricate a few components and option two two, 
you design, fabricate all the component. So this option was employed in our CIFO case around 2000, because at that time, there were no uh, commercial of the shelf parts or component which we can buy from the websites. Important thing is that you should find an adequate option considering your team's expertise and your target outcomes. This table shows the relationship between the development style of CubeSat and what you can learn from the project. The horizontal axis shows the items which you can learn from the project, including mission creation, architecture design, system analysis, subsystem design, project management, AI and T standing for assembly, integration and test, and the ground operation. Small S shows a small effect and the large L shows a large effect. Let me show uh, one example. In option one, you only develop a kit, including a mission as well. In that case, only you can learn the project management, assembly, integration, and the test, but with a small effect. Ground operation should be done usually by yourself. And so there is a large effect. Comparing the uh, required cost and the human resource, I would like to recommend two options. That is option one one, purchase the kit plus design fabrication of one original mission by yourself. So you purchase a kit, but in addition to that, you create one mission by yourself. And the, uh, not only the uh, component, uh, component of purchase, but also you design and fabricate uh, several components which realize your mission. And another recommended option is option 2-1, original mission with purchased component to uh, plus some designed component. So uh, just like option 2-2, developing all the component would be very tough. So I'd like to recommend you to take 2-1 in which you design and fabricate only a small number of components, but you should design your own missions. This kind of the CubeSat or satellite project will give you very good training for the many field, including practical training of whole cycle of a space project. Space project, usually requires very long time, including various kinds of the tasks, including mission conceptualization, satellite design, fabrication, ground test, modification, launch and operation. And through this cycle, you can know what is important and what is not so important. And also it gives very important experience of engineering. So it gives a training of the synthesis, not the analysis, to realize your mission. And the, uh, you can get a feedback from the real world to evaluate your design, test, procedure, and so on. And also, sometimes you can get the learning from failures. But the, you know, failure is a very tough. So I would suggest that this kind of the failure should be done while the project cost is small such as using uh, you know, CANSAT and so on. And also it gives you a very good education in project management. Do you know four management tasks which are very important? Please guess. Okay, time, human resource, cost and risk. Teamwork, conflict resolution, discussion, documentation is another very important management task. And sometimes you uh, launch your satellite in the foreign country, then international cooperation, negotiation, and mutual understanding will be required. So as a result, this kind of the training will also contribute to other technological areas as well. Finally, I will give you the conclusion. Please keep this in mind. 
survivability in space is the most important. Imagine as many possible phase failures as you can and pre prepare countermeasures against them. That is a very, very important thing. Reset is an effective way to recover your satellite from anomalies. Please prepare effective ways to do a reset. Reset is sometimes called power off on or power cycle. Start with a very simple CubeSat. After your first success, you can step up to more sophisticated satellite. So starting from a very simple CubeSat is very important to strategy. Study various knowledge, skills, and project management before developing a satellite. CANSAT type hands-on training is very effective. Define the target outcome of your project. Only the launch and operation of your first satellite is not enough. You can get something and continue it to your next project. And finally, I think this is very important. Please have fun. This spirit will provide you with energy, endurance, and never give up mindset. Thank you very much for your kind listening. That's all.